I reviewed the Eagles album on the border. It was released in 1974 and produced by Bill Simzik, uh, with two songs produced by Glenn Johns. Uh, so the band started out working with Glenn Johns in England, uh, recording their album, and then they kind of stopped getting along with him. I guess uh, they kind of had a different vision for what they wanted the band to be than what he did. He kind of thought the band should stick with the country uh, stuff, and they kind of wanted to be more of a rock band. He didn't really like think they were capable of that, I don't think. Uh, and then like some other problems they have with him, I think like him not letting them have drunks in the studio and stuff. Uh, so they weren't getting along with him, so they got Bill Simzik to produce, um, and they only used two songs from those like earlier sessions uh, on this album. And I'll get into more kind of what I think of, of the different production uh, later on when I talk about the songs. Uh, as far as me having this album, it was, I don't really remember getting it specifically. I think just whenever I was getting all the Eagles albums, because I bought them all. Uh, within like a few weeks of each other really. It was all just like really quick. Um, and this one I think I got just somewhere in the middle of all the other albums. It's never been one that uh, has been one of my favorites. I kind of, I mean I did listen to it a lot because I listened to all, like, all of their albums except for uh, The Long Road Out of Eden really a lot. Um, but yeah, I, it's just kind of always been one of those like middle of the pack albums for me as far as they go, kind of overlooked it for a long time. Um, but listening to it tonight, I kind of my opinion of it went up quite a bit. The track Already Gone is a Jack Temption and Rob, I'm not sure how to say his last name, sorry, uh, song. So not written by the band, uh, but it is the kind of introduction of a new member of the band, uh, Dom Felder, who he's not, he's only on this song and another song that I'll mention later. Uh, so only on two songs on the album, but he was brought in to play some extra guitar on those uh, songs and they liked work, I think he was, a, he was a friend of Bernie Ledden's and they liked working with him so much that they invited him to uh, join the band full time. So he's only on two tracks on the album, but Felder becomes kind of a major new addition to the band. Um, he's a really, really good guitar player. I like his playing a lot, and on this uh, track, I think that his playing is probably my favorite part about it. Uh, I think it's a strong opening song. It's got a good vocal from uh, Glenn Fry. Um, like I said, Felder, I think, is the big standout to me on this track. Uh, I always thought they, the Eat Your Lunch line was kind of goofy, but I don't know. It's, it's a good, good song, good opening track. Uh, Second track, You Never Cry Like a Lover. This is uh, sung by Don Henley and uh, J.D. Souther. Uh, sung by Don Henley, it's one of the Glenn Johns tracks. Um, and I do think I kind of like the production on his two songs a little bit better. Uh, not saying anything about, about uh, Bill Simzik's production because I think that he does a really good job taking over. And uh, I like all his songs and the, the production on them, but I just, I don't know, something about the, the Glenn Johns or two songs that he did just stand out a little bit more. And I think that might be because, uh, I mean, this was the third album he was working on with, uh, with this band, so he kind of knew exactly what uh, he wanted to do with them and stuff. And this was, uh, you know, Bill Simzik's first album working with them, so uh, I don't know, but I just, uh, I think that the song sounds really good. Uh, good vocal from Henley. Uh, I think that the band sounds pretty good on it. Uh, there's some cool bass stuff. and. Um, it's never been one of my favorite tracks on the album, but I think it's really kind of growing on me now. Uh, the third track, Midnight Flyer, a uh, cover. This one uh, it's sung by Randy Meisner, and uh, I always really liked his vocal. Like I've said before, he's my uh, favorite singer in the band. Uh, so I really like this track. Great banjo from uh, Bernie Ledden. And it's always just kind of been up there close to my favorite song on the album, but not quite my favorite song. Uh, Fourth track, My Man, is a song by Bernie Ledden, a uh, tribute to uh, Graham Parsons. And I'm a really big Graham Parsons fan, so I, of course, find the song like really, uh, you know, it's really moving and stuff. And I think that uh, great, just a great vocal from Bernie Ledden on it, really emotional, and um, probably my favorite vocal that I've ever heard from him. Probably my favorite song, I think, that he's written, really. Um, and probably my favorite song on the album, just a really uh, just 
crazy good song. It's got some cool uh, pedal steel on it that I think uh, Bernie plays. But yeah, just a great moment from Bernie, great song. One of those songs that just kind of like gives you goosebumps at some parts of it. Um, uh, fifth track is the title track on the border, song by Henley Ledden and Fry. And I think that it's, I don't know, it's kind of a weird track. I think that the band themselves kind of consider it a little bit of a kind of failed experiment, at least from what I remember hearing. Uh, they all take turns singing part of the song, taking a lead, even though they're all pretty short, other than Henley, who's the kind of main singer through the, the whole track. Uh, so that's kind of different, kind of neat. It's never really been one of my favorite songs on the album, but the more I listen to it, the more I kind of get into it. Um, I think it's got some cool stuff on it, uh, some more cool bass stuff. I really love uh, Randy's playing on this whole album. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's an interesting song, if nothing else. Uh, six track James Dean by uh, Henley Fry, J.D. Souther, and Jackson Brown. And never really been my favorite song on the album. I never really got the whole James Dean thing. I think that was you know really before my time. But this like all the people from this time were really into it's James Dean. Honestly, I don't think I've ever seen one of his movies. Um, so maybe I should do that sometime. But. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, always thought to me it was always kind of a little bit cheesy lyrically, um, but I do like the the way the band sings it, like the way they sound on it, um, and I really like the the instrumental track and like what they're playing and stuff. I think that uh, that part's really cool. Uh, seven track, old fifty five, a Tom Waits cover, and uh, Frey and Henley both take turns singing parts on it. I think they, they both sound really good, but I really love Henley's parts. Uh, it's got some cool uh, pedal steel from Al Perkins, and uh, I think it's a, a really good cover. I really like the original though, um, but yeah, I don't know, it's a, it's a good cover. So uh, they track Is It True? This is a Randy Meisner song that I've always liked because, like I said, I always like Randy's songs. Um, I think he d gives a really good vocal on it. Uh, it's got some really cool uh, bass parts on it from him too, and um, just uh, some cool guitar and stuff. Good song, kind of uh, kind of like a deep cut. I don't know. I've, I've always listened to it a lot. Uh, ninth track, "Good Day in Hell," is uh, a song by Henley and Fry. The other track to feature Don Felder on it. He plays the slide guitar, which is um, one of my favorite parts of the song. And this is probably like my second favorite song on the album. Another song that is partially tribute to Graham Parsons and also to uh, Danny Witten, who I think was one of Neil, I think he played with Neil Young, not really sure. Um, but yeah, another another just great track. Um, Henley and Fry kind of sing together. Um, Felder's playing on it's great. Uh, probably like my second favorite. Um, probably repeating myself, sorry, it was a really long day and I'm like really tired. Uh, then the tenth and final track, Best of My Love. This one is the other Glenn Johns produced track, and um, I think it was their first number one hit. Uh, I had this on the Greatest Hits CD before I got this on, on the album. It was never one of my favorite songs on there, uh, but it's a song that's really grown on me over the years, and now I, I really like it, whereas then I would always kind of just skip it because I thought it was slow and boring. Um, but I think it's got some really great uh, singing on it. I think it sounds really good. Uh, school bass parts on here too. I just think Randy, Randy's really great on this album. But yeah, uh, on the border, I, I don't know. It's it's a little bit different for the Eagles. Definitely kind of a transitional album with them switching producers and uh, bringing in Felder, but he's not like fully there yet. So you know, there's songs that sound quite a bit different from from some of their others because like you have a completely different guitar player on two of the tracks and two of the tracks have a completely different producer. Um, so it's kind of a more all over the place album than what they usually do. Uh, but that actually, I don't know, kind of makes it more interesting, kind of gives it a, like a charm of its own. So uh, one that I kind of 
I don't know, maybe not listened to as much as some of the others in the past, but I think this one is, uh, I don't know, one that I'm going to start listening to more and more often because it's, it's really good pretty much all the way through. Um, I don't know, it's just a, it's kind of a weird album for the Eagles.